Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So today we are going to talk about the most important thing. We should understand what do you mean by graphical architecture, how, how exactly the system works. So in any company, either it is any uh, mobility services or any uh, fintech or maybe any uh, e-commerce application, there are so many use cases are available. So we are going to talk about how exactly GraphQL uh, architecture in terms of client and server architecture. So understand that okay let's see this is my client side and the client side uh, it could be you know any client the client could be a mobile app also it could be a, a web application also it could be a simple browser app or native app also it could be anything right it could be on uh, android or maybe on your mobile app that is on uh, ios device also it could be a web application also and then i'm going to send my request to the graphql server so let's see this is my graphql uh, server like that so this is i'll simple say this is my graph uh, ql uh, server fine now the important thing is that whenever i'm sending the request to the graph ql server we have to send a query over here okay over the http post call i'll be sending a query right now this query could be format as i told you that for example let's see i want from the user and i want that okay all the user ids and their name just give it to me like that right so this is the format of the query, but how exactly GraphQL server will understand what kind of query and what is the schema of that. So we hear at the server level that what exactly the developer will do that developer will define some schema. For example, that okay, fine, that uh, for this particular user type, right, ID will be is what, let's see for uh, ID will be an integer type and not means it is a mandatory field, non-null field. Name will be uh, something, let's see, is a string type like that just like in the backend process in the rest api also we have to define some schema over there like this i'm going to define some schema for this particular type equal to user fine so this is a schema there are varieties of a schema we will talk about in the upcoming chapters so let's see the schema is defined so that uh, graphql will understand okay yeah this is the kind of query that we are getting and against that this is the schema is written behind that so that is the schema is a contract between what the contract between the client and the server so this schema will behave like a contract for me. Fine. And once the schema is defined, client can send the respective uh, uh, query uh, to the server and then the server will respond back accordingly. But later on, <coughs> the GraphQL server is mighty possible that okay, it is directly connected to some database, which is interacting with the database. Let's see, this database could be anything. It could be a SQL database or a NoSQL database also. That is also possible. Mighty possible that okay, this GraphQL server is sending the request to some other uh, other uh, microservices also, which are small, small microservices are available. So let's see, this is my microservice number one, microservice number two, microservice number three. And each microservice is having its own database, right? That is the uh, architecture of the microservice like that. So they are having their own uh, databases. Could be possible that, okay, fine. This GraphQL server is sending a request to some uh, a specific REST API, which is uh, already written. Right, we are sending a request to the REST API and the REST API is having its own database over here. For example, any SQL or NoSQL database, that also could be a possible. So here we are doing some RPC calls and this is a uh, typical API call that we are doing it. And then we are sending the request, getting the data from the uh, database like that. So in any case, in every case, the data base will respond back to this particular GraphQL server or if you're calling any microservice, microservice will fetch the data from these databases and will be responding back to the GraphQL server. In case of REST API also fetching the data from the database and then it will respond back to the GraphQL server and the GraphQL server will respond back okay, to the client and the response will be in the form of response will be in the form of, for example, a JSON object, right? Some JSON object that, okay, fine, this is the ID some id is there and what is a name for example name is equal to naveen is there in a string that we are getting it so this is the response that we are getting and the user will display these response on their web application or android or ios application like that right so here what we have to learn there are multiple learning curves over here first thing is that either you have to learn the query this is the query that you have to learn if you are really working as a QA or QA automation engineer, you don't need to develop any uh, schema for that or any uh, GraphQL APIs. You don't need to develop that. So you can simply learn that the syntax and the and the basic architecture of the queries, what do you mean by mutations, query and subscription, 
And if you're really working on the GraphQL, the backend development side, then you should know how to design the schema, how to write the uh, schema, and then what are the different resolver functions are available. So you have to write some resolver functions, whatever the language that you are using, either Node or JavaScript or uh, C Sharp or and Java, whatever that you are writing it, you should know how to create a contract. So it's a typical backend work you have to understand written by the developer if you are working as a developer. Then these are the RPCs, which are microservices, which are already written. So you just uh, send a request to the RPC and get the response back and then and then display the same response to the uh, manipulate the response accordingly and then uh, get it back to the client over here. Right. So likewise, uh, you can uh, design it. So what is the important thing here to learn as a QA point of view for a QA point of view, you should concentrate over here that uh, what kind of uh, query, what are the different types of query can be filter out the query, what is the uh, query architecture and qu query schema and everything we should understand that. Okay, so this is a typical architecture of that in between what exactly I can do, I can provide one API gateway also. So let's see, this is my API gateway. Right, the gateway will decide okay, which API which endpoint that we have to uh, hit over here that also we can simply uh, do that. So always remember whenever someone is asking you that okay, yeah, where exactly the role of a GraphQL. So this is simple diagram. This is my client. This is my GraphQL. And then the GraphQL will send the request maybe to your uh, old legacy system or any microservice. So let's see, this is some API are available. It can hit the API. It can hit any microservice also. This microservice is having its own database. This API is also having interacting with some other database like that. And then maybe some old uh, database uh, system that you have that also uh, we can send the request to the uh, old database as well. So this is, we will get the data from the different data sources and then we will respond back to the client in the form of JSON over here. And ultimately from the client side, we have to pass the query that what exactly you want. So GraphQL server, this GraphQL server is expecting a query from the client side and the client has to decide that, okay, what exactly data you need and then we will fulfill the data. But we have to make sure whatever the query that we are passing, the same schema is available at the GraphQL site. The contract between GraphQL server, so this is my GraphQL server, and the client should be matched. They should know about that, what type of data that we have to pass. It's not like that, okay, you are expecting a name, but name is not uh, defined over here. In that case, there is a contract mismatch, right? So in that case, I cannot uh, get the data from the GraphQL server. This is the way API works. So I hope it's clear. This is a very basic about the GraphQL architecture. Please understand that if someone is asking you at a time of interview, you have to explain this thing. So that's all for this particular video. Thank you so much for watching this and I'll see you in the next video. In the next video, we will talk about uh, different schemas and the queries and the mutations. Thank you so much.